Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to cover the second of the initial three-part series on FreeCAD for beginners. If this is your first exposure to FreeCAD, you really should take a look at this other video first, where I describe the concepts behind FreeCAD and basic use of the tool. Specifically, I talk about the difference between a direct object manipulation computer-aided design program like Tinkercad, where you basically drag cubes and spheres and diamonds onto your surface and add them together and subtract one from the other, and a parametric design program like FreeCAD, where you have a series of steps and you can change an earlier step and that will affect or impact all later steps. The goal of this series is to design practical things that you can 3D print. So this is a very practical print. Um, I have a desk that's this thickness and this slides on there and fits perfectly because I measured this and designed this from FreeCAD for this desk. And the purpose of this is to get rid of all these cables that I keep losing. So um, these just hook onto this bracket and now hang from my desk. So stay tuned and let's learn together about how to design practical items in FreeCAD. In this lesson today, we'll learn some more about the tools. And then in the next lesson, the third lesson in this initial series, we'll actually design that cable bracket that you can size for your particular desk. Okay, let's get started with FreeCAD. And before we do that, I wanna point out something that is a challenge for a lot of people. We're going to cover a number of different ways to use a mouse to manipulate your object. But all mice are not created equal. These are both mice produced by Logitech. This is actually a more expensive mouse. This is called the MX Anywhere 2 mouse. And this is the basic M535 mouse. I don't know, maybe this is a $35 mouse and this might be a $65 or $75 mouse. One of the things that you use in a lot of computer-aided design programs is the ability to scroll with the scroll wheel and to press it down and move your mouse where this acts like a third button. That doesn't work on this mouse. You can reprogram this extra button here to act like that third button, but it's not the standard operation of pressing on the scroll wheel, even though it clicks, doesn't do what you expect. So if you're following along with this video and some of these things don't work, it might not be you. It might not be the computer. It might not be the version of FreeCAD. It might just be the mouse you're using. So I'm going to also talk about keystrokes you can use to do many of these steps. Now keystrokes come in two flavors. You have Mac style and you have window style. On the Mac, we're going to be talking about using the command key. On Windows, the same key you would use for these same operations is the control key. Okay, let's turn to FreeCAD and get started. You'll notice here that I'm on FreeCAD 0.19. In the earlier video, we talked about how to obtain a copy of FreeCAD. You also notice that down in the corner here, it says CAD. And if I move my mouse over that, it will tell me about the different navigation buttons I can use on my mouse. When a button is blue, as in the center button under the word pan, that means it's depressed. If I wanna change my navigation style, I can pick from any of these styles here by clicking on the word CAD and change it. We're going to leave it in the CAD style. That's the style I'm most comfortable with and it's the default style. So now let's go to new, create a new document. When you create a document, you have to select a workbench. Remember a workbench from the earlier video is a selection of tools for a style of computer-aided design or manufacturing. We're going to use the part design workbench, which is a workbench you use when you create a two-dimensional drawing and then you extrude it, which is called 
padding it in part design. We're going to start by creating a body. What's a body? To me, and this might not be technically precisely accurate, a body is just a part. But it's a part where all the features touch each other. So as an example, if I look at this train um, that I print these for my grandsons, this is a part and this is a part. The wheel is a separate part because it's not necessarily touching. Yes, I can click them together and there's a way in FreeCAD to create assemblies to test multiple parts. But each part in the part design workbench is referred to as a body. And all of the components of a body have to be touching each other. We're going to see that in just a moment. So I have a body. Now I will create a sketch within that body to define my features. I'm going to select my X, Y plane here. That's in essence, the tables top plane and click OK. And the reason I select a plane is because a sketch is two dimensional. Therefore, it has to reside on a plane. Remember X, Y, Z. And two axes, X, Y, Z form a plane or a surface. So we're going to do something very simple. We're going to click once on the rectangle, click in our drawing, hold down and drag, release, and then click again in order to draw a rectangle. You'll notice that our rectangle is still selected. See the rectangle next to the cursor? If I hit right mouse button, the right mouse button, I click on it, that goes away. Now this is an unconstrained drawing. That means I can click on any of these points and drag this anywhere in our space. In general, in parametric design, you wanna fully constrain your drawings so they don't move on you while you're working with other features or capabilities so you know exactly what the size is, where it is located in space. We don't need that for what we're doing right now. I'm just going to close this. If I click on pad, I've created a three-dimensional object. Now, if I use the scroll button, I can make it larger or smaller on the screen. That's not changing the size of the object. It's just changing my view. If I press down scroll, I can pan or move around in space. If I hold control and the right mouse button, I also can pan. And shift and the right mouse button, I can rotate. Now, when you go to rotate, it will rotate around the point, in essence, where your cursor was placed when you started that rotation. Now, one of the most interesting things about this is as a parametric design tool, if I click on model in my combo view, I go click and expand pad, we'll see our original sketch is still there. If I click on that and hit the space bar, we can see our sketch. I can double click on that sketch and I can change the shape of that sketch completely. And when I go back, the pad operation is reapplied and my pad changes. I can make this larger again. And now I can take and draw another rectangle inside. Close this. And now our diagram has a hole in the middle. I can double click on sketch and I'm gonna put another rectangle out here because I'm gonna to wanna to do some, oops, what is this on the bottom? See these red messages? Result has multiple solids. That's because a single body, and we're in one body here, has to have only touching features. So what if I select these two points here? I did that by left clicking and dragging over those two points. And then I go up here to constraints. A constraint is a rule. And I say those two points are coincident. That means they're like the same. And now I close this. But before doing that, let me clear these error messages. I right clicked down here and hit clear and close it. And now that properly padded because all of the features are touching. Now, if I needed to have something else out here, 
I could go back here to my model. I can now create another body, create a sketch in that body on the XY plane, click OK. And let's say, because I'm in a different body, I can't actually select any of this. This is just showing me where it is in space. I can go down here and select and create another body. And then I can pad that body and that will work properly. But these bodies are not related to each other. They're two separate parts, like the wheels and the body of this train. Now let me go back here to my model and you'll see we have body one and body two. If I hit the space bar on a body that's selected, it will show it or hide it. Show it or hide it. Now, if I'm scrolling around or I'm zooming in and my objects appear to disappear, I can click on this little icon here and it will fit my diagram back into the viewable area. I can use these little diagrams here to change the position of the camera or the place I'm viewing it at. This is a traditional 3D view. Now I can click on the word origin and hit the space bar and then I can see where in space my objects are residing. So you can see this is extruded below the XY plane. So let's go back to body one, click on pad and say reverse. Uh, it was actually above and now it's below. See how it's moving on the XY plane? So it's sometimes very useful to have your origin turned on. Now I can select this second body. We're not going to need it and just delete it. Now I want to put a hole right in here. So how do I do that? Well, I select this face, clicking with the left mouse button and say, I want to create another sketch. I'm creating a sketch on top of this diagram. And let's say I'm going to create a circle because I want to cut off the corner of that. Right mouse button to take and release the tool, close. That's selected. If I go to tasks, I say pad and we get another object. I could reverse that object and it would overlap with that object, but I don't really want to do that. I want to select that object there and I'm going to do a pocket instead. And what it just did, I'm going to click OK, shift and right mouse button is we just cut off part of that corner. Now that's great, but what if I wanted to do this mathematically precisely? Well, let's go to the sketch and let's align this point right here with this point. Now I could do that visually, but that's not going to be very precise. So there's a way to make a component from your drawing, a feature from another sketch accessible to this sketch. You look for the little icon that looks like the plunger for dynamite and you click on that and then you find the point you want. So if I want that point to be accessible, I click there, right click to release it. Now I can select this point here, command or control on a PC, select this point here. Once I will make them coincidence and now they, they're precisely aligned. So this can be precisely defined now. So as an example, I could take this circle and let's say I wanted to have a radius of exactly 12.5 millimeters. So I'm going to cut 12.5 millimeters out of that corner, close this. And now you'll see that it's aligned precisely. Well, we learned about today, drawing a sketch, drawing a sketch inside of a sketch, the idea that a body has to have all connected features and how we can use a sketch on a surface in order to take and add a feature with a different operation, a pad or a pocket in order to add to our body. 
Now, what if we want to refine this body? So maybe I want the edges of this body here to um, be softer. Well, so if I select that edge there as an example, or let's select this one here and go to tasks, you'll see two options come up, fillet and chamfer. A fillet is when you round over an edge and a chamfer is where you make it an angle. So let's click on fillet here and I'm going to take, it's a, let's make it a three, four millimeter fillet. And now, if I rotate this, we'll see it's a nice round angle there. Maybe I want this edge over here to be a flat angle. I'm gonna make that a chamfer instead of a fillet. And you can see how easy it is to vary our diagram. Now, all of these features are listed in this model combo view. And at any time I can go to an earlier sketch, let's say this sketch here, and I can make changes to it. So I can make this much smaller. Close. And you'll see that the pocket is still in the right place. Why? Because that pocket was tied to a point that we mapped as an external point. The Fillets and the chamfers still stayed in place. So that's the power of parametric design. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please subscribe, click on the bell, share this video with everyone you can think of. And if you've subscribed and clicked on the bell, as soon as I publish the third in this series, where we're actually going to create this useful item that will fit on your desk just right, you'll learn about it. So thanks again, and let's continue to learn things together.